Right now, uh, we're talking Major League Baseball headlines with our buddy Ian Castleberry, who writes for national uh, sports and pop culture websites, thecomeback.com and awfulannouncing.com, and also does a number of uh, radio hits, as he does here with us each and every week. And Mondays, we talk baseball, and it's presented by Happy Hill Restaurant, feeding Asheville since 1967. Well, Ian, good afternoon. A gorgeous one. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, doing well, and, and maybe I shouldn't admit this, but I ate at Happy Hill for the very first time yesterday. For, no uh, kidding. For lunch, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not usually on that side of town, but yeah. uh, you know, I, I've been kind of meaning to go uh, since they sponsored. But I mean, I, I've lived in Asheville for for enough time now, where I'm long overdue for a visit. And, yeah, I enjoyed it. I had a had a cheeseburger and fries. Ooh. It, yeah. was, uh, it was very tasty. That's that, that's one of my go-tos, buddy. I uh, might want to put a little bacon on that, and then you got the Pat Ryan burger right there for sure. Uh, <laughs> excellent, man. Well, I know Mike appreciates that, and we do as well. And I guess the Braves do because, you know, the Braves completed a walk-off weekend against the Dodgers in the National League Championship Series, and, and Ian, Atlanta winning games one and two in its final at bat. The big question is, can Atlanta hold this lead and win the series? Because, well, last year, as we talked about with Chris Smith in the prior segment, the Braves blew a, 3-1 series lead to the eventual world champion Dodgers. But Ian, what do you see the Braves having to do to avoid a repeat of 2020? Well, first of all, they have to get the timely hit and hold the Dodgers offense in check. I'm a little worried as we're getting deeper into the series here, if this is where the Dodgers pitching depth might give them the advantage in games three, four, and five. They have Charlie Morton in game three, and then I assume Max Fried will come back in game four. And then the Dodgers, they have Walker Bueller. Now, now, game four might end up being the most important one of this series because where are the Dodgers going to go? If the Braves have Max Freed, the Dodgers come back, I assume that, uh, Dave Roberts is going to go with a bullpen game, You know, maybe start Corey Knable uh, or Tony Gonzalez, as he has been doing, because I don't think he can start Max Scherzer on short rest. We saw him last night. I think Scherzer, I think it's starting to catch up with him a little bit. He looked pretty gassed. I didn't even make it through five innings. But I think if the Braves pitching continues to perform, I heard you and Chris talk about this. The Braves, you know, they're playing like the team that, that doesn't have any pressure on them. And they don't have pressure on them. The Dodgers are the defending World Series champions. All the expectations are on them. They have the, the most talent. They have the huge payroll. And uh, Atlanta is playing free and easy. But I will say, if you're the Dodgers, you look at games one and two and say, well, we, we kind of beat ourselves, especially uh, in game one, that, that big base running mistake that Chris Taylor made late in the game and, and both walk off wins by Atlanta. So if you're the Dodgers, you say, OK, we didn't get blown out in either game. We just got to keep bearing on our talent, our depth will take care of itself. And for Atlanta fans, I mean, I, I know Chris said this already. Uh, last year, the the scars are still there from blowing that three one lead. Yeah. So to uh, if they blow a two nothing lead again, I mean, I think <laughs> the Braves, a lot of Braves fans are just going to give up on baseball. <laughs> it's like I'm over it. It's no longer part of my life. By the way, Dave Roberts, Dodgers manager, taking a lot of heat today for using his Urea, who's normally a starting one of their better starter starting pitchers, instead of bringing in Jensen. Do you agree with that move? He he defended it and, and seemed to be pretty confident in why he did it. Yeah, I think that was justified. I mean, uh, Urias, uh, that would have been, if you're going through uh, the rotation, yesterday would have been what you call Urias' uh, bullpen day, you know, where he's out there getting loose and, and working on things. So I, I think to just use him in an inning, I, I think Dave Roberts is very aware of his pitcher's schedules and whether or not they can go. Urias is probably going to start Game four, again, it might be a bullpen game uh, like, like we saw if Urias is uh, a little bit tired. Maybe they go with Corey Knable to start uh, and bring in Urias uh, in the second and third inning. But, no, I, I didn't really have a problem with that. All right. Uh, now now we can move on as Ian Castleberry joins the Wise Guys. Uh, good luck to the Bravos tomorrow night. Meanwhile, tonight the Red Sox host the Astros in Game 3 of the American League Championship Series. So, Ian, can the Astros take advantage of Sox starter Eduardo Rodriguez, who gave up an average of six runs a game in two games versus Houston in the regular season? Well, the game is in Boston, so I think that does help uh, Rodriguez. And Rodriguez, I think, is a better pitcher. Uh, than when he faced the Astros earlier in the season. He was outstanding uh, against Tampa Bay uh, and throughout postseason here. And the Red Sox have that appearance of a team that each night somebody else could be the hero. You know, it could be Christian Vasquez. It could be 
Kike Hernandez. It could be Alex Verdugo, uh, you know, next man up sort of thing where there's not, I, I feel like the Astros maybe have a little more pressure on their stars right now to perform, you know, Carlos Correa, Alex Bregman. They do have a deep batting order, but I, I, do, I still think that the pitching depth favors the Red Sox, uh, especially yeah. As these games go later and bullpens uh, come into play. By the way, we're it's we're, we're two games into the series, and you know the Red Sox haven't complained about the Astros stealing signs. Maybe that's because the manager of the Red Sox <laughs> was part of that back in 2017. Yeah, I don't think Alex Cora is going to say a single <laughs> thing about uh, sign stealing. Just throwing that out there. All right, Ian Castleberry on the DC Creaseman Jewelers Wise Lines. We're rolling through our baseball headlines for this Monday, presented by Happy Hill Restaurant. All right, so Major League Baseball is now going to pay for a player housing. This is going to start next season, and that will certainly help financially, Ian, for especially the lower, you know, the the the, the players who are in the lower leagues, such as the Ash tourists in high a and you know those who know know that minor leaguers especially those play at the lower level certainly this is going to be a big boost for them financially uh every dollar counts when you're at that age and you're getting paid you know that kind of money yeah this is a long overdue move by major league baseball and this is actually the promise of what major league baseball said they were going to do when they took over the minor leagues like before you know this was up to the individual clubs uh, owners, they put the onus on the players to go out and find their own housing and so forth. But now with Major League Baseball in control uh, of the teams and, and, and each franchise controlling their four affiliates, you know, they're better able to monitor this sort of thing and, and to, to pay out, which, you know, over the course of a season really is not that much per team. I think it's something like less than a million dollars. And you think, well, geez, if they can't afford that, I mean, of course they can. So this is what Major League Baseball was at least selling, you know, when they took over the minor leagues. And unfortunately, you know, a a lot of other lower uh, affiliate teams and and cities lost their minor league uh, baseball, official minor league baseball affiliation. But this is supposed to be the payoff. And uh, you and Chris, you know, we're talking about the host families, and I think there is going to be a a little bit of, uh, not, not blowback, but I mean, I think some some host families, especially if they were sort of depending on that for income. I don't know how many actually were, but uh, you will lose something. But I think by and large, uh, you know, the benefit far outweighs uh, whatever yeah. losses there are uh, for, for host families. Yeah, understood and, and agreed upon. As Ian Castleberry joins the Wise Guys, Monday's talking Major League Baseball. And um, all right, Ian, we hit on Mike Schultz firing by the Cardinals last week. Literally just hours after it happened, you were in for our NFL Gold Nuggets feature. But, of course, you put on your Major League Baseball hat when this news <laughs> broke, and you did it very well, we should point out. You were not nuts about the firing, and neither were Cardinals fans, at least on my Facebook feed. I've got three or four. They were not happy about this, and he had a lot of expectations, apparently, for the man, next manager uh, who takes over in St. Louis. It's a great organization, but when you win 90 games and you lose your job because you have a disagreement with management, Oh, boy. All right. So that's what I think the the candidates are going to be facing. So which names are in the running for the job? Well, traditionally, the Cardinals hire from within. And Mike Schilt was an example of that. Uh, Mike Matheny uh, was a player for the Cardinals. So I think the, the top two candidates right now look like Oliver Marmol, who was Mike Schilt's bench coach. Uh, he's been with the team for the past. Well, he's been Schilt's bench coach for the past three seasons. He has a good uh, rapport with the players. He, he's a native Spanish speaker, so communication should be a plus there. So I think if you were looking for a smoother transition, Marmol would be the guy. I think the question is going to be whether, you know, do, do the Cardinals, as uh, John Mozeliak, the general manager, do they want to make more of a clean break from Mike Schultz's staff? It doesn't appear that's going to happen. I would put Marmol as the favorite right now. Uh, also on that Cardinal staff, the, the fantastically named Stubby Clapp, uh, first base coach. Um, that can go in so many directions. How'd yeah, you get your uh, name? There... <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend I, gave it to me. <laughs> I, I should have I found that out before uh, going on the air. But he's the Cardinals first base coach. He has experience managing in the organization. He managed the Cardinals uh, AA uh, and AAA affiliates. He has interviewed for uh, jobs throughout the major leagues. I think he interviewed for the Pirates opening. I haven't been able to determine if it, there, there was talk that he interviewed for the Tigers opening, but I, I haven't been able to confirm 
with anybody covering the team as to whether or not he actually interviewed for the job or there was interest. But anyway, Stubby Clapp is somebody who probably ready to be a major league manager, so it may well be the Cardinals. Wow. But you may also see somebody like Skip Shoemaker, former Cardinal, uh, people who follow Major League Baseball probably remember. Skip Shoemaker, he's part of the 2011 World Series team. Uh, he's He's been a bench coach. Uh, he's an associate manager with the Padres. Now, there is some talk that one of the disagreements between Mosaliak and Schilt was over the use of analytics, that Mosaliak wanted to take a, a, you know, use more analytics, implement that more in how they made lineups, set uh, defensive alignments, et cetera, and Schilt wasn't necessarily on board. Again, that, that's, uh, not, that, that's rumblings, not confirmed, but Shoemaker is more analytically inclined uh, working with the Padres staff uh, and their front office. So I think you have to look at him as well. Jose Akendo is a name who, Ooh, yeah. you know, I think it was a big surprise when Tony La Russa retired. I think everybody thought Jose Akendo, former Cardinals player, was going to take that job. He didn't. He is now a minor league instructor uh, at their uh, the Cardinals Jupiter, Florida complex. Is he comfortable doing that after so many years? Maybe he wants to stay. He's kind of content doing that. Or does he want to move back up to the major league? So I think those four names are who you have to look at uh, for the Cardinals. But, of course, there's plenty of veteran names out there. Buck Showalter, uh, Ron Washington uh, with the Braves, Brad Ausmus. uh, And then there's some guys who who have been up for jobs and haven't gotten them in the past, uh, like the Astros bench coach Joe Espada, Matt Quattuaro, uh, the Rays bench coach. Uh, So plenty of names for the Cardinals to choose from. Wow. And and – you know, one name, of course, they don't have to worry about it, is Mike Schilt. But uh, reportedly, Mike Schilt interviewed with the Padres. I, I would love to see that happen. He, he seems like a player's coach, and uh, he's got the experience that obviously their last manager, rookie manager, did not have. And, uh, you know, this is a team that collapsed in, in the final couple of months of the season. W- would he be a good fit, do you feel, for, for the organization in San Diego? I think he would be a very good fit. He's definitely what the Padres appear to be looking for, as you pointed out. They had a first-time manager in Jace Tingler, uh, even Tingler's predecessor, Andy Green, first-time major league manager. So I think they definitely want a veteran. And, you know, if somebody is available whose team just won 90 games, who's been to the postseason in all three of his full seasons, I don't think you could do any worse than Mike Schilt. But uh, what I mentioned, if analytics is an issue, and maybe that's just something that the people around the Cardinals floated out there to make themselves look better, uh, maybe make Schilt look a little worse on his way out the door. But the Padres are an analytically inclined organization. I don't know if that's something Schilt would, would be willing to work with in a new job or if that's something, you know, he would butt head with A.J. Preller, the general manager there. But Schilt would be a great fit there. Personally, I think the best fit for this job would be Bruce Bochy if he wants to come out of retirement. Ooh. He managed the Padres before. He's close with the ownership group. I don't know if he wants to take on a major league managing job again, but if he wants to come out of retirement, he's not going to find a more talented team than the San Diego Padres. Boy, that's the truth. No doubt about that. You know, Boshi was a um, kind of, he was an average major league catcher at best with the Padres, but of course a hall of future hall of fame uh, manager for sure. So we'll see where it goes with Schilt. Certainly if the Padres have talked to him, maybe a couple other teams down the road uh, will do so as well. And Ian, can't thank you enough, my man. We'll look forward to uh, catching up with you. It uh, looks like next week we'll have, we'll have a ton of baseball to get to for sure. Plenty to talk about. Yeah, maybe some of these uh, series will be over. Real quick, yeah. the, the more successful the Braves are and the longer they go in the postseason, you wonder if that is going to hurt Ron Washington if he's, you know, the, of the three jobs that are open. Some teams, you know, they might not be willing to wait for Ron Washington to be available. Good point. We'll see how that one plays out for sure. But uh, hopefully uh, the trade-off is the Braves can uh, move on to the World Series. We will see on that. <laughs> great okay. great point as always, Ian. Appreciate you, friend. Have a great rest of the week. All right. Thanks, Pat. Thank you, Ian, very much. That's Ian Castleberry with the Wise Guys.